Senator Barrasso. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ulrich, you know, your testimony described a number of obstacles to developing oil and gas on federal lands at home in Wyoming. Uh, one of the most significant is uncertainty around the Bureau of Land Management, their lease sales. Uh, since President Biden took office, the Bureau has defied the law and held only, what, one lease sale in the last nine quarters, so almost two years. Uh, what changes to the Bureau's leasing process would be most effective in providing some certainty for producers going forward? Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, Member Brasso, first things first, uh, actually holding quarterly lease sales uh, and, and adhering to that mandate would be critical. Uh, also, a, a very significant uh, uh, issue with the entire NEPA process is layer upon layer upon layer of NEPA analysis. If we had up-to-date, effective, and timely resource management plans to address all of our resources and expedite lands that should and should not be leased, that would be very effective as well. So before the Bureau can hold an oil and gas lease sale, it needs to conduct multiple rounds of environmental analysis. Uh, the reviews determine which lands are open to be, le to be leased and under what conditions. Before the Bureau can approve drilling permits on these leases, it conducts further rounds of environmental analysis. Can you talk about this duplicative process and the protracted environmental review process in terms of oil and gas production on federal lands and explain how Congress can help fix this broken process? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Barrasso, uh, the process is laborious to say the least. Uh, uh, clearly, prior to lands being leased, there's an environmental re review. Uh, prior to that, there are overreaching resource management plans on federal lands that uh, are, are set in place to guide development and conservation and all other environmental resources uh, for a very uh, long period of time. Once you get a lease, you either go through an EA or a five to 10 year process for an EIS. After that, typically you'll have to go down to an APD level where you might need to get an environmental assessment and other impact analysis as well. So Mr. Chairman, you can see the challenge. Uh, if we had stronger, more effective resource management plans and we could tier from those resource management plans and tier from one solid set of environmental reviews and process quickly with hard deadlines, uh, you could save an enormous amount of time throughout the entire process. Uh, thank you. M Mr. Nolan, the, the Biden administration wants to do a, quote, carbon-free electric grid by 2035 and a net zero carbon economy by 2050. It plans to reach this goal through the widespread adoption of electric vehicles and solar and wind uh, electric generation. So electric vehicles use over six times more minerals than vehicles with internal combustion engines. Solar panels require roughly five times more minerals than natural gas generation per me megawatt hour. Offshore wind requires roughly 12 times more minerals than natural gas generation per megawatt hour. So under the current permitting laws, is there any way in the world to meet the president's goals without dramatically increasing America's dependence on China and on Russia? Thank you for the question, uh, Senator. Global investment in U.S. mining has dropped in half over the past 20 years. Um, industry surveys on where to invest continues to report the U.S. has lost attracti attractiveness due to the uncertainty in the permitting process and the regulatory and legal environment and tort systems. Um, so I would say, you know, the Chinese started this process of investments from um, mining both at home and overseas as well as standing up a robust processing and uh, smelting platform in, in China. So they are 20 years ahead of us. And it's, it's now time for us to catch up if we're going to meet the needs of the electrification of the economy and the EVs. Yeah. So, so how critically important is access to federal lands right here in the United States for future mineral production in this country if you're going to want to meet these goals that the administration has come up with? Uh, inc incredibly important. The minerals are where they are. We don't get to decide that. Now, there are certain areas that we have to look out for and be very careful with, and we are. We have the highest labor environmental standards in the world here at home. 
Um, so uh, your, your point is well taken. Mr. Grummet, do you disagree with anything that Mr. Nolan just said? I appreciate the opportunity, Senator. No, I wanted to indicate I, we agree both with the frame of your question and Mr. Nolan's answer. And I think that fundamentally our only opportunity not just to achieve our climate goals, but our security goals are going to require significant investments in infrastructure, in mining, in production, in manufacturing. And I think that's good news for the country. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I listen to this discussion, I can't help but be reminded of an incident.